We so said this is healing rally. So we're going to, we're going to discuss either actually about healing or faith, how to receive by faith, something, something along those lines to help people receive. Amen. So we'll, let's kind of move on the faith side tonight. You know, we've been sharing some on some of our uh, Sunday night services uh, on, the, on this line on the first Sunday of the month uh, about healing and different types of healing. But we were just kind of uh, talk about receiving, amen, receiving by faith. And I'm not going to get into what faith is, but let's talk about how faith is released. All right, look over at Mark 11. Uh, how could you not talk about this without talking about Mark 11, amen? I know, you know, listen, Brother Hagin did not write this. Some folks think, claim that he did, but he didn't. Accused him of writing it. You know, it's amazing how many times uh, some people will start getting on preachers and, and coming after them and, and saying that they're, that they're a cult and whatever, and all they do is preaching the Word. I mean, the whole counsel of the Word of God, not, not cutting corners anywhere, just preaching the whole Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, look at Mark 11. We'll start up here in verse, so let's see here. Let's start in verse 15. 12, 12, verse 12. On the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, Jesus. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found, um, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of the figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it. Now, I always find that interesting. The fig tree wasn't saying anything, but it was saying something. It was saying by having leaves that there were figs there. And, um, and Jesus answered that, that tree and said, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And this was not an unspoken request. And his disciples heard it. Like I said uh, earlier, you know, going at Pentecostal, we used to have unspoken requests in church. You know? You say, say hand me an unspoken request. Like flipper. You know, flipping that hand up there. Now, can, I, can anybody please explain to me what an unspoken request is? Think about it. Now, how can, you know, uh, agree with me in prayer with my unspoken request. Now, how can I agree with you? I don't even know what we're praying about. Amen. If it's unspoken and unknown to me, how am I going to agree with it? Lord, I, they might be believing something that ain't Bible. And look, I've had people say stuff to you that wasn't Bible. Want somebody else's wife? Something else like that? Well, you can't agree with that. That's not Bible. Hello? People that crazy? Oh, it's crazier. Have you ever, have you ever told you about the time I had a couple call me up for counseling and came to my office and sat down? They weren't, they weren't, they weren't uh, going to church anywhere. They just looked at somebody to help, help them out. And they hadn't needed me. I thought, well, I'll help out as young in ministry. I found some things you just don't do, you know. And uh, they came in, and within five minutes, they had cussed each other out, using God's name in vain. And, I, and I'm, whoa! <laughs> Sit in my office. I can't help you. I had to say, you know, you ground rules. You can't cuss in my office. You can't be cussing each other out, calling each other's names and all this stuff. Uh, you, you think I help, you know, if, if I can't counsel you according to the Word of God, you follow after the example of Jesus, I can't help you. Amen. And so, you know, unspoken, you know, unspoken request, you can't agree with an unspoken request. You don't know what you're agreeing with. You can't, and you can't be in agreement. Think about this now. What if I'm in the car with you, and you go through the drive-thru and say, I have an unspoken order. And, and, the person, and, and then the person says, have anybody else in your car got an order? And, they, and, and I say, yeah, give me the same thing he got. How are they going to give me any food? Nobody knows what we're talking about. Amen? So, I said all that because Jesus, Jesus spoke to the tree and the what? The disciples heard it. Talking about silent prayer. There's no such thing as silent prayer. You might be thinking to yourself, but you're not praying. Amen? And try that with your wife. Just sit there and think, well, I love her, I love her, I love her. I never tell her. Well, I, 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 I had silent thoughts that I loved her. Well, that don't work with a woman. Hello, women, y'all just missed that opportunity that I give y'all every once in a while to really get the men on track. You say you got to take advantage of those opportunities now, like by going, hey, man, moving right along. And they came to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves 
and will not allow that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And taught, saying, It is written, My house should be called a house of prayer, uh, of all nations, the house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. And the, and the scribes and the chief priests heard it and saw how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. And when the evening was come, he went out of the city. And in the morning, as now listen, this phrase, and in the morning, um, in the Greek, you can, it can have the, the idea or the concept that uh, on another day or, or, or some time had passed. We, we don't know for sure whether it's specifically referring to the next day or if it was just talking about a week or two weeks or whatever later, okay? Um, but the, the Greek can, be kinda, can kinda go that direction. So, uh, but in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance to him, remember saith the master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. Now this tends to make me think that um, this was one of those things that was that was um, not the next day. Now I just, just I'm going to say you can't interpret the Greek that way, and and the fact that Peter took time to call to remembrance, you have to really call to remembrance the next morning. Okay, I get the idea that maybe they passed by it a few times. Amen. See, if everything happened instantly, see, most, miracle, most healings and most miracles don't take place instantly. You, you go through the Bible, you'll find many times it said, and they began to amend from that very hour. They got better from that, from that point forward. They started to get better. But it always was an instant. See, everybody's looking for an instant manifestation. Amen. And, so we, and, 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 if we, and here's the problem. We get the testimonies of those who do, which is great. It helps inspire people that, you know, God, God does work and God is healing manifestation. We should, we should believe that whether, whether we see anything or hear testimony or not. But then the, those who weren't healed instantly or, you know, maybe they were beginning to amend, but they can let go of their faith because it wasn't an instant thing. You know, not all things are instant with God. As a matter of fact, biblically and principle-wise throughout the Bible, things usually or line on line, precept on precept, here a little, there a little, they, they grow and they produce over time. And um, so uh, my, my thinking is from, from the way this, this really um, really took place here, you know, G Peter calling his remembrance says, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curse is withered away. And Jesus answers and saith unto him, um, have faith in God, or have the God kind of faith. You know, there's... there's the ability to interpret that either way. Have faith to God or have the God kind of faith. And then Jesus goes on the next verse in verse 23 and says this, For verily I say unto you, now verily is, a, is an Elizabethan term. Our equivalent would be something along the line of I swear, or I, I give a solemn oath, okay? Not, not swearing like, I, you know, I swear to God, you know, kind of, you know, but, but a solemn oath. I, I, I get, you know, I'm, I'm giving you a strong oath. I'm giving you a strong assurance in, in verbal language that this is what I'm about to say is true. So verily, verily, I say unto thee, that whosoever, now how many in this room qualifies as a whosoever? All right, 98% of you. All right, we got 100% now. Hallelujah. We, we're glad you made it. <laughs> we just wait for her to join the grand ranks of the whosoever's. Hallelujah. <clears throat> whosoever shall do it. Now listen, the whosoever's got to do something. Now, everybody likes to have the whatsoever. But you got to do what the whosoever's got to do to get the whatsoever that you want. Isn't that right? Now, did I get you confused yet? If you did, I'll help get you on your confused. Whosoever shall say. Now, a lot of people want the shall haves. The shall have whatsoever's. Everybody is in the game, and I'm, I'm, I'm using vernacular, just don't, don't get uptight. This is not a game. I'll get, get some Mickey Mouse email. It's not a game. Okay, understand the semantics. When people verbally speak, they use terminology that may not always be whatever, but people understand it. You probably use stuff in your culture or where your house that, that somebody could argue with. Everybody is after getting they shall have whatsoever. Everybody wants that. People who don't even believe want the shall have whatsoever. Isn't that right? Everybody wants the end result of what they desire. Amen. Everybody has desires. If you're sick, sick people would desire to be well. You know, we, we are going to Tulsa all the time. 
You go through Memphis, and then when you go through Memphis, right where the belt line comes back in the 40 right there, the river, over on the right is, is, is um, the uh, Children's Hospital. Um, it's Danny Case thing. St. Jude's, thank you. I just totally went blank. St. Jude's, I started to say Brenner, but that's over in Winston. St. Jude's Children's Hospital, Danny, you know, Danny Thomas, Danny, I said Danny K, didn't I? Danny Thomas's hospital there. And, um, you know, and there's, there's children in there and there's families in there. You know what every one of them want? Every one of them desire to be healed. There's not a one in that hospital that doesn't want to be well. There's not a one that went there hoping to die. They all went there with a hope and a, and a desire to live. And you go by any hospital in any place where there's people in, in, in sick wards or whatever, people want to be well. People who don't have money want to have finances. People who are struggling with, with issues, family issues, want to be liberated. So everybody wants to have the whatsoever. Are we here? Y'all gone home? How many have gone home? All right, just checking out. All right. Some, you know, people could go home right here in the middle of the service and stay here. Leave their body right here and go home, right here. <laughs> Are you here? All right. So, we all know that everybody wants the shall have whatsoever. But you see, the, the shall have whatsoever is contingent upon who the whosoever, what the whosoever has to do. <clears throat> and so he says that whosoever shall say, Unto this man. Now, now we find out that Jesus said, Have faith in God or faith of God. And he begins to describe how to operate this faith. And so he says, Whosoever shall say, now that's the first step, or, one, or, or the first thing that we see actively done, is that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And, now what does this tell me? What is and? Now, if you remember your, your, your uh, equations uh, in math or your, your English rules uh, for certain things in English, the word and, especially particularly in a mathematical sense, if you have, if you have like 4 plus 4 equals 8 and 3 plus 2 equals 7, and you had that was true false, that would be false. Why? Because both sides have to be correct. Both sides are equally, equally important. Take the word and out and put the word or in there, and it becomes true. Why? Because one side's true. Oh, you only have to have one side. When the word or is in there, only, only have to have one side to make it true. Am I correct? Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Jesus didn't say, whosoever shall say unto this mountain or believe in his heart. In order for this to work, both sides have to be activated. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt. It's not just doubt. It's doubt in his heart. What? Doubt in his heart. Amen. Whosoever shall say, and does not be there, we will cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in the heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith. Now, so he says this, you've you got to say it. You can't doubt it, but you have to believe it, that, that what you're saying is so. And if you do that, you shall have. Now, the, Jesus didn't say you might have, he said you shall have. You cannot make a stronger affirmation in the English language than shall in a single word. Now, you might go, I'm telling you for the fact, I absolutely, totally, 100% guarantee you, but that is, any, that is no stronger than shall. Shall is the strongest assertion in English of an affirmation of something. Okay? And Jesus said that you are to say to the mountain, and it was about, see, now we're not talking about running here, standing over in the Himalayas at the, mount, at the base of Everest going, be cast into the sea, be cast into the sea. That's not what he's talking about. It's allegorical. He's talking about a mountain representing a problem that is huge. Amen. How many have ever, how many have ever ridden, uh, ridden, uh, ridden? How many have ever been riding and rode right up on, on, on a, a huge mountain range? Our mountain ranges are not huge. They're they're, they're lovely. I love the Appalachians. They're, they're pretty. They're, they're, they're lazy. They're, they, they rise nice and, you know, gentle and, you know, and they're green all the way at the top, you know, and everything. But we've been to the Swiss Alps and the French Alps and the Italian Alps. And, man, you're coming up and boom, there they are. And you're thinking, how am I getting over that? Tunnels. 
You only go up a certain place and, 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 and inspection in the winter, and then you go through it. It's not, uh, Mount, uh, the Mont Blanc Tunnel is like seven miles of tunnel you drive through. That's no fun. Big turbine th fans, and they're blowing all the fumes out and stuff. You know, the word, the mountain here does not, is not representing a physical mountain. That's not what he was talking about. And you're foolish if you're running out here trying to get rid of some mountain and put it in the river. Now, we got, we got people who get a hold of stuff and get a hold just enough to make them dangerous. And then run out and start, I'm confessing that mountain is going in the ocean. And the Bible says, I have no faith. No, take it for what it meant. Interpret it properly. See, those kind of foolish things hurt people's faith and hurt people around you's faith. <clears throat> or the friends you're trying to witness to figure out you're a lunatic. Hello? Go out to the swimming pool and go walk on water. But I notice most people that do that put on their swimsuit. Why? Just in case. If you've got a just in case, you ain't in faith. Come on now. Are you here? You're going home. No. And so he said that the person who desires to receive something, in verse 25, let's go ahead and read verse 25. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have, I'm, I'm sorry, verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. Now, that, now, remember, when Jesus said, therefore, it was a synopsis, amen, of what he had just said. Therefore, I say unto you what things, see, see, verse 24 is a summary of verse 23. Verse 23 is more specific. specific. It says, whosoever shall say unto the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, amen, and shall not doubt in the heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass, and have what service saith. Then he says in verse 24, therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. What did he do? He summarized what he meant. He's, the mountain was symbolic of an insurmountable problem, but if you will speak to it, believe in your heart that, you know, that it's being removed, and don't doubt, it will go. And then Jesus says in verse 24, that, so I say unto you, whatever you desire, what's the mountain? The mountain is something standing in the way of what you desire. When you pray, now, we've said this before. I'll say it again. The word pray here is the same word used over in James, I believe, the fourth chapter, where it says you have not because you ask not or you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lust. The word ask and the word pray here are the same Greek word. It's A-I-T-E-O. Now, I'm, I'm probably not pronouncing it right, but I, I just say it's a T-O. A-I-T-E-O. And so really what Jesus says um, in verse, back here in Mark eleven twenty four, he says, Therefore I say unto you, what things shall you desire when you ask? Same Greek word as used in James. So you can say, James, you have not because you pray not or you pray amiss. It can be interchanged. That's the same word. Okay? So when you ask, believe that you receive it, and you'll have it. So this is the synopsis of it. You've got to speak, no doubt, believe what you're saying is true, and you'll get it. Can somebody say amen. So, so for the believer... When we're dealing and facing uh, things such as sickness and disease, faith doesn't change. Remember when, uh, in Romans, the 10th chapter, for the believer to come into the kingdom of God, it said, you know, that, um, that if, if we'll confess him as Lord and believe in our heart that God's raised from the dead, we'll be saved. Confession or de declaration and faith makes things happen. Amen. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. People, people declare some stuff that you can't declare. You know, I, I see some of these preachers get on the Facebook and, or they do it on television, people post it. I declare that every evil spirit operating in everybody in the country will be, they'll be they're set. you can't do that. You know why? You don't have the authority. That went over big. You don't have, if you don't have the authority to go cast out every devil out of everybody in the whole, whole United States of America. You don't have the authority to stop every demon spirit from operating in everybody in the whole country. See, we say stuff like that, people, whoo, yeah, I've sent money, and then, and then nothing happens. You kids can't get up and make blanket declarations, in, particularly in the arenas where you have no authority. Now, as your pastor, I've got, I got a certain amount of authority in your life, but I just can't blanketly remove every evil spirit from you if you're not going to cooperate. Hello? The whosoever's got to get involved. 
<clears throat> now, you, you just can't, you know, I declare everybody well, and you know, I declare everybody saved, and, 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 and you know. And then what you can do is pray the Lord of the harvest to him for laborers. That's what we're told to do. We're not told to declare everybody saved in the whole country. We're, de we're, we're told to, send for, to pray, that the, pray that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers into the harvest. Wouldn't we have more success if we would just do what the Bible said? Instead of coming up with cool sound and stuff, you know, that everybody goes, Woo! And then send us money. Hello. Right after they do all this, they say, Oh, I need a ten dollar offer from everybody. Well, praise God for ten dollar offers from everybody. I'll, we'll take it. But you know what? That's not what you, you can't you just can't do stuff to manipulate money. No. We've got to get back to understanding that when we are dealing with stuff, we've got to start doing something. Jesus said, whosoever shall say. Now listen, he shall have. Understand there are things operate on a personal level and corporate level. And there are arenas, there are certain things that are not applicable corporately without the whole corporate being in agreement with it. That's why you just can't speak to the whole United States of America that, you know, everybody's going to, you know, God, this is the year that God's going to open the door, everybody's going to prosper. Not if their faith ain't even prospering. Not if they're not doing what God said to prosper. You know, God's opening the door and no man can shut it. Well, that's true. God opens doors and no man can shut. But if you ain't tithing and ain't giving, you can't, you, your door's shut. And God don't open doors that violate his word. Thank you for your enthusiasm. <laughs> let's get back to doing what the Bible says. You, you're fa you face sickness or disease, you go get you some healing scriptures. And you meditate on them. Amen. They're easy to find. I mean, the old Dr. T.L. Osborne has a little book, 101 Divine Healing Facts, a little bitty book, a little mini book. Got all kinds of healing scriptures in it. You know, we got books, you know, there's, there's books like uh, Healing the Sick. Um, um, let me think now. Healing the Sick by Dr. Osborne. There's a book by Dr. Uh, I forget, it starts with like McCroskin or something like that, that, that Brother Hagen and Brother, Brother Hicks edited, um, that, that body healing, Bodily Healing and the Atonement. You go get you stuff that, that gives you scriptures and points you in the direction of scriptures that produce faith in you for healing. And then you begin to confess the word. You got to speak the word. Everybody say, speak the word. You got to say it. And you got to get to the point where you're, you're saying to the mountain and you're not doubting in your heart. You understand? That doubting in your heart will undermine what you're saying with your mouth. If, you're not, if you don't believe it, Therefore, I say unto you, what things ever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. If you don't believe it, you're not going to get them. See, saying without believing doesn't work. I say it again. Saying without believing doesn't work. It doesn't produce anything. Now, people, people come on and say, now write down this and they make this confession daily. Well, it's really not a confession. I've said this before, I'll say it again. A lot of people are, are quoting a sheet of scriptures and calling it their confession when really it's their meditation. And there is a difference between meditation and confession. The big difference. Now, to the observer outside, it's the same. They hear you saying, by his stripes I was healed. They hear you saying, according to Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that's within me. Bless his holy name, and forget not all of his benefit, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. They hear you saying, Isaiah chapter 53, verse um, 3, 4, and 5, it says in there, that by his stripes I, was, uh, I am healed. And then 1 Peter 2, 24 says, by his stripes I was healed. And then Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 says, that he healed all the sick and cast out the demons with his word, that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying himself bore our infirmities and carried our sicknesses. <clears throat> Amen. We, we, we see the scriptures, amen, over and over again about healing throughout the Bible. Amen. We see that. Go to the world, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Let any of these sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. The anointing of all and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Say, sozo. The sick, heal, make whole. Amen. And I hear you saying that, but if you don't believe it, it's not confession. It's meditation. Well, we meditate until faith arises. How long is that? Until faith arises. Until you believe it. Until you're fully persuaded. 
until the light goes off in your inner man, not in your head, not in your flesh, but in your heart. This is true. Amen. Uh, you know, you hear testimonies about people trying to get people filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, I, I, now growing up Pentecostal, I've seen every Houdini trick in the world try to get people filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you. I mean, they'll get you gather around, you get down at the altar, and you got, you know, you got the whole church there. You got somebody up on the piano banging away just as hard as they can bang. You know, you got Sister Rumley coming up and grabbing your jaw and, and shaking it, trying to make you speak in tongues. You got somebody slapping you on one side going, hang on. You got somebody else on the other side going, let go. Somebody else screaming in one ear, shout hallelujah. Somebody else saying, shout praise the Lord. And then Sister Rumley will grab your chin and go, either blah, 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 blah. <coughs> and turn around, and somebody on the piano, they got the little spin it upright lid lifted, and they're just banging on it. And every once in a while, somebody actually gets filled with the Holy Ghost. In spite of it. It won't be because of it. And they all thought because they did all that, they would try it on the next victim. Hello? And, uh, and the simplest thing in the world. Now, see, here's the thing. I grew up Pentecostal. But I didn't, get, I didn't really give my heart to the Lord until 1979 on, on, a, Sunday, on a, um, a Sunday night, Wednesday night, Wednesday night. And then that Sunday I went to church, and that Sunday I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now, the thing is, I worked with a guy, and he said, now look, I know you go, I know you go to the Pentecostal church. And he said, uh, he said now they're going to you know, tell you to tarry. You know, we used to tell people you got to tarry for the Holy Ghost. You know, going to tarry. And um, he said, but all you got to do is ask God. He said, yeah, he'll, get, he'll, he'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. And so that Sunday night, I went over all by myself because we always, you know, either Sunday, usually on Sunday nights and, and, and Wednesday nights, we'd all go down to the altar for just at least a little while and then everybody pray. That, that was just part of the tradition of the church. And, and, and that's one thing when we do, do construct another setup, I do want an altar because people, things happen for people when they get down and pray. It's amazing what you can get done if people will pray. Amen. If you can actually get them seeking God, they can get answers without you doing anything for them. So I went off to most churches. I went over to the side over here. And uh, I said, Lord, well, your word says, I'm just young. See, here's the thing. When you're young and dumb, you actually believe the Bible. Is you get educated by, by theologians out of, out of faith a lot of times. When I say young, I'm not, I'm not being mockery, you know, that you've got to be dumb to believe the Bible. I'm saying I didn't have anybody educate me out of faith. That's when I said, Lord, your word says you'll fill me with the Holy Ghost. If I ask, it's a gift. I receive it. Thank you in Jesus' name. And man, fire started in my belly. And then it started up my, right, up my, right up my esophagus. And when it got to my my whole jaws went numb. Man, but next thing I know, I'm on the floor speaking in tongues. Just, oh man, hallelujah. Here come Brother Moore. Leaned out over, gave me a great big hug and kissed me on the forehead. Just so excited. Said, man, love God, love people. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, filled with all the, just simple as shit, just simple faith. Because I believe, well, okay, I believed him. Amen. He said, he showed me the Bible as a gift. If you can get people to see what the Bible says. Now, how many times, you know, you minister to people, try to get them filled with the Spirit, and, and, they, um, and they'll, they'll think that God's going to do the talking. You know, you've got to yield to be filled. If you don't yield, God won't fill you. He'll come, but he won't make you speak in tongues. Hello? He won't knock you over and make you. You got to be yielded. You got yield, to yield your mouth. You got to yield your tongue. Some folks don't like to yield their mouth or tongue. Some of the mouth and tongue have been too dirty. It needs to be cleaned up. Anyway, God will clean it up. Hallelujah. But all that to say this, you've got to be yielded. You've got you've to act in faith that God's going to do what he said he was going to do. And if you can get people to see things and respond the Bible way to things, they'll get what God says. So easy. I'll tell you, and sometimes it's just easy to take baby Christians and go get them filled with the Holy Ghost and any, then, then to wait three months and, and let, some, let all the unbelieving believers get a hold of them. I'll tell you one thing, especially in the church I grew up. I'll tell you one thing, I waited, I tarried five years. I appreciate the Holy Ghost. Oh, oh my. I, I, I don't want to depreciate him any less. Bonehead. 
You could have had five years of praying in the Holy Ghost and accomplishing things in the Spirit instead of sitting around. And now you run around with your, your five-year badge on that I had to tarry five years. Now everybody's trying to outdo each other how long they had to tarry. Had one guy in our church, he'd been, he'd been tarrying. He grew up Church of God. He, he'd been tarrying for, for uh, about 15, 20 years and finally got to the place. I heard, heard him say this. He didn't believe you guys speak in tongues to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because he'd been down there all the so many times with the hang on, let go, turn loose, shout hallelujah, shout praise the Lord, do yabba dabba do or something. Are you here? And he never got anywhere because he wasn't respond, he he responding the right way. He was expecting God to do something, but God was expecting him to do something. Act. For the believer, the number one way to act is to say. Amen. Number one way. Uh, <sighs> hallelujah. The number one way. Glory to God. Glory to God. The. the huh. <laughs> have you not read that it's said that the tongue is an unruly evil that no man can tame that it takes an act of faith to be yielded to the spirit to yield the tongue to the holy ghost to speak forth those utterances of the spirit that bring forth revelation and insight that bring forth refreshing hallelujah this is the refreshing wherewith you shall cause the weary to rest. With stammering lips and another tongue will I speak to this people, says the Lord. So, 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 so. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, glory to God. <laughs> My. Mm. Well, now, Lord, you're trying to take me somewhere, and, I, and I'm, I'm trying to run ahead. What is that? Glory, 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 glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. I kind of got over close to something, and 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 went, and I needed to go a certain direction. I went the other way, and he said he was trying to arrest me. <laughs> you see, um, th there was a time in the church we were we were interested, and, and it had an expectancy. Of getting people filled with the Holy Ghost, get them saved, get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, most, many, I, I'll, I'll back off of most. Many of our churches don't even care anymore. We're robbing, we're robbing our people of something. I'm, I'm, now, internet, you listen to me. Get your people filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You pastors, get your people filled with the Holy Ghost. They need to be filled. You're, you're cheating them out of, of necessary equipment. You're sending them to battle ill-equipped because they had not yet received the in, in, uh, the empowerment that comes from the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Oh, my. Oh, my, 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 so do Oh, their needs, they, yeah, 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 they, 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 the yieldedness that we have not had in the past few years in our midst to the Holy Spirit. We have our programs, we have our order, we have um, what we think. But the Spirit of God beckoning us back to a place of yieldedness to him and to his voice so that we with clarity hear the voice of the spirit did not the lord say to the church he that hath ears to hear let him hear what what the spirit saith to the churches we're looking for the for what dr so-and-so says to the churches or what the new book is or what the Christian television program or whatever has to say to the churches instead of hearing what the Spirit saith. That will come through a yieldedness. I know we're talking, this is a healing service, but you know you can get healed when you get yielded. He'll show you what to do. 
Amen. I said, Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Rakasi le raki le raki to kusku. Lago zukus uskuski le raki skis kusku te la la kaki. Mani kusku le le bikuda be kime. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, Rabra de Bedez. Everybody stand up. Just, just stand up. Lift your hands to the Lord. Pray in the Holy Spirit. If you're Pray in tongues, pray in the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. They, they that are led by the Spirit of the sons of God. They that are led by the Spirit of the sons of God. <coughs> Praying in the Spirit creates a yieldedness to the Spirit. The word that you need will come out of the innermost being, out of the Spirit, if you'll yield to Him. Grebas. Grebas, Groski, Madanski, Nakosk, Alak, Isk, Matakuskus, Kiskis, Sakosukusuk de Biti, Sakabunda Bakiskete, Ikuka, Ulak Mete, Idrusquala Benani, Ki, 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 Ki. Too much effort has been wasted, wasted in the church, running after this and running after that when we should have come aside and prayed, prayed in the Spirit, heard the voice of the one who speaks, who speaks to the church corporately and speaks to the church individually, who is a searcher. Oh, oh. Who searches the mind and the will of the Father himself. The great holy one. Oh, Rabba Grisk. Rabba Disklik Mananagiski Ki Ki Ki. Bombo Bobo Sutu Digisiki Diki. La Zukusku de Lelebe. Oh, Kranemeki. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I heard in the spirit, I'm, I'm not sure if I, this is the right word. I, I couldn't quite, but there's great dearth in the earth. Pressure. Pressure. Particularly in the arena of finances. But the Lord says, if you'll listen to the Spirit, He'll show you how to avoid the calamity that many have already faced and, and come through victorious. But you're going to have to hear what the Spirit says. Now, not somebody going around saying, you're going to prosper no matter what. That's not what the Spirit's saying. He's going to tell you certain things to do. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Precious Holy One. Glory, glory. If you'll, if you'll pray in the Holy Ghost, you'll get revelation. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Lord, we thank you for, for what's taking place here, what you've, what you've spoken, what you've delivered, delivered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody you need us to minister to you by laying on hands for any kind of uh, ailments, disease, sickness. He wants to minister to you. Glory to God. Amen. The Bible does say that, you know, that they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Just stretch your hands out. Hallelujah.
Father, we thank you for the anointing that destroys yokes and removes burdens. Lay hands on these prayer claws. Thank you. Hallelujah. That the anointing is transferred into each of them. Glory to God. And that when they're laid on the sick or the sick come in contact with them, that anointing is released. And it affects a cure in them. Hallelujah. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet and makes them every whit whole. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we decree it and say it so. We speak over cancer. We speak over, oh, my, 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 Alzheimer's. We decree that diseases of the flesh, diseases of the blood, internal diseases, diabetes, kidney failure, whatever these claws come in contact with shall be eradicated and the person shall be made whole in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for it. We expect the good testimony of what the Lord has wrought through this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Y'all agree with us? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But Brother Joe, you got everything ready? All right. We're going to receive the Lord's table. So if you'll go ahead and come up here and make a, a row across the front with enough room between the steps of the platform and, and for the ushers to get between you. And then um, don't for us forget to receive the offering either. I done plumb forgot. Hallelujah. And we always say, if you're, if you're a member of the body of Christ, you can receive communion in our church. We don't limit it to the people who go to our church. I'll accept your testimony. Hallelujah. If you're born again, you're born again. You have a, you have a place at the table. Amen. Hallelujah. Ever say, God is good. There's, there's some things we have to do, church. I just, I got us all over to the spirit. We're just, we're just, we've got to get back to some things. I know there's a, there's a battle going on, you know. There's a battle going on to separate the church and, and to bring the church down and to, to make it less effective. But I'm telling you, we've got to get back to the things of the Spirit. Well, the churches are growing by being carnal. It's going to catch up. 